Hello and good afternoon, students. Um, I am excited to talk to y'all today about decimal multiplication and division. Um, if this is your second time watching the video, we are gonna kind of split our page into thirds. So the first two thirds are going to be this section, and then there's going to be two example problems down here at the bottom. So go ahead and take a moment to pause and copy what you see here on the screen in your notebook. Okay, so the first thing I want to point out right out the gate before we actually get into the nitty gritty of when we multiply and divide with decimals is that if we were to take a number and if we were to adjust the decimal by either moving it forward or backward, it changes the value of the number um, and it represents a specific kind of either multiplication or division. So if we're looking at these first few examples, you'll notice we're moving the decimal place to the right and each time the number is getting bigger and essentially what what we're doing is every time we move our decimal place one place value to the right, that is the same thing as if we took this number and multiplied it by 10. Um, so when we move our decimal place to the right, essentially what we are doing is we are multiplying by 10. I'm just going to put multiplying by 10 here in a big kind of format. Um, and then the opposite is true as if we move the decimal place to the left. So if you look at kind of starting over here on the right hand side, when we move our decimal one place back, what we're doing is we're dividing by 10. Oh, I'm sorry, we should have started at this point. If we moved it one place back, now it's 30.26. That's the same thing as if we took 302 and divided it by 10. If we take 30.26 uh, and divide it by 10, we get 3.026. Same thing as just moving the decimal place back. So if we were to move the decimal place to the left, this is the same thing as taking the numbers and dividing by 10. So we can alter our decimal places. We just have to make sure that we understand that we're either multiplying or dividing by 10, depending on the direction that we go. And we can rewrite our decimal multiplication and division problems by altering the place of the decimal. We just have to make sure we do it to both parts of the problem. So if I'm going to move the decimal like forward one spot in one of the numbers, I have to make sure I do it in the other number as well. So it doesn't change the value of the problem. So let's talk about the steps to solve when we have to multiply or divide decimals, uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to actually utilize this moving the decimal um, skill or resource tip. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. So we want to move the decimal. So we can have integers. I'll say so we can work with integers. Okay, if we can utilize this moving the decimal so much so that we can end up like if I move this decimal point in this example one more spot, then I would have 3456 and it's easier to work with whole numbers than fractions or decimals most of the time. So if you can move the decimal so we can work with integers do that so that way you can alter uh, the problem but keep it all the same. Um, the second step is to actually multiply or divide so depending on the problem we want to multiply or divide. And we want to make sure that we remember to put decimal back in our answer. Um, so let's not forget, and I'll kind of show you in some examples how we put the decimal back in our answer. And then the third step is we are going to make sure, as always, we follow the integer rules. Follow the integer rules. Follow the integer rules, always, always, always. So this is our three-step process, moving the decimal so that way we can work with integers or whole numbers, multiply or divide our numbers, make sure we put the decimal back in our answer, and then make sure when we we're doing the multiplication or division, we are following the integer rules. If this is your second time watching the video, go ahead and take a moment to pause and write down these two examples at the bottom of your uh, notebook page. All right, so let's go forth and try solving these problems. Let's do our multiplication problem first. We have 13.5 times 2.1. Well, I can move my decimal one spot over to make 135. And then I can also move it one spot over to make 21. I wanna make sure um, that I move the decimal the same amount of spaces in both. And so because these both only have one decimal place, I can. it's very easy to make the integers. So this is the new problem we're gonna work with. So 135 times 21. So if we go through and multiply that out, uh, one, 
times everything is just going to be itself. I'm gonna put a placeholder of zero. Five times two is 10. Carry, um, this should be seven, 27. And then if I add all of this up, this should be 2,835. However, that's not our answer, right? If we think about like 13 times two, we shouldn't get something in the 2000s, right? So I'm gonna go back and look at how many decimal places I have total. I have um, two decimal places total, right? There's one in 13.5 uh, and there's one in 2.1. So I'm gonna move my decimal two places in so I'm just gonna put two places over here. So the final answer is going to be 28.35, which makes sense if we kind of rounded 13 times two is 26. So it makes sense that our answer is somewhere around that and we got 28.35. So don't forget to put your decimal back in your answer, but this is a way that you can rewrite it and do your multiplication with whole numbers. Let's try the same thing, but with division. So. Um, again, I only have one decimal place in either answer. So I am going to move my decimal one spot in both. And that changes the problem to 125 divided by six. So now I'm simply just gonna do this division. I don't think six goes into 125 a perfect amount of times. So I'm gonna set it up like a long division problem, 125 divided by six. Six goes into 12 twice. Six times two is 12. And that makes zero. If I bring down the five, six goes into five zero times. Six times zero is zero. That brings my remainder down to five. Now at this point, this is where the decimal is, right? If I put 0 0.000 after 125, it still is equivalent to 125. So this is where the decimal is in my answer. Um, I already brought down that five. So now I'm gonna bring down the zero. Six goes into 58 times six times eight is 48. 50 minus 48 is gonna be equivalent to two. And then if I bring down that zero, now it's 20. Six goes into 20 uh, three times. That makes 18. And if I were to keep going with this process, this actually ends up being a repeating decimal. So my answer to this is gonna be 20.833333 uh repeating so i can just kind of leave it like this or if i want to rewrite it i could say 20.833 dot 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 uh repeating so i follow the three-step process for both of these if one of them was negative and one of them was positive we would have to use our integer rules to determine if our answer was supposed to be positive or negative but essentially if we can move our decimal places so we work with integers it makes the multiplying and dividing so much easier if this is your second time watching the video, I'm gonna go ahead and flip over to your practice questions. Here are your four practice questions that you have. Go ahead and take a pause to copy them down. And if you're having trouble reading any of them, this is negative three divided by 0 0.5. This is four hundredths divided by 1.2. This is negative five times two tenths. And this is negative 7.1 times negative three. If you have any questions or if you get stuck, please rewatch this video, write your questions down at the top of this page. And I will see you guys very, very shortly to talk about something involving a little bit of pre-algebra. Okay, bye.